There's no question. Yeah. All right, look who's joining us right now. This is the first time on the show for Breland Moore. She is the sports anchor at Fox 29, also the co-host of the 215. Uh, welcome aboard, Breland. How are you this morning? Yes. How are you, Breland? How are you? Yeah. We're, we're doing great. Breland, a little birdie told me uh, that you may have been, and we're, we're, sur- we're, we're ganging up on John with temple people, by yeah, the way. Temple, <laughs> too many temple people. Okay. Yeah. We're, we like to outnumber John. So this is a, this is a good thing. Uh, but a little birdie told me that you may have been the temple owl mascot. Is that correct during your, your temple years? Yeah. How about this that? Is, this is correct. Um, so I was Hooter the owl and it's just, it's a weird thing, right? Um, I had, a ton of different experience as a mascot um and it was just incredible um to be able to do that for all four years of college okay all right well that's what i was going to ask so you did it for all four years you did it i i was going to ask you how lengthy that span was that yeah so it's a very strange convoluted story right of of how that came about i was a (laughs) i was a mascot in high school and i don't I, i can't explain why it's a very convoluted story um but I just always wanted to do it. And then I was the mascot at the Reading Phillies and the Reading Royals. And there was just, there was so wow. much mascot experience. I couldn't not do it in college and <laughs> orientation. I had sent um, like a little disc of all of the stuff that I had working with the fanatic and whatnot. Um, and I got called in orientation, had like a special little like athletics director um, designation on my stuff. And I went in and um, the rest was history. So it was, wow. it was, that really is awesome. tremendous. That's a way. lot of mascot yeah. experience. I, I would say, that. I would venture First to say, all, you had I more experience. Term, Rob. I no, love Rob. No, John, she had mascot more experience, experience than anybody. Yeah. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Sorry. I love the term <laughs> mascot experience. Yeah. And I just picture you're real so or something fun. and you got mascot you know, experience like, leading it off. Yeah. And you know what the crazy <laughs> thing is? Um, that's the number one thing people look at you know whenever i apply for a job or whenever i do anything it's not um you know all the fun stuff i've done career-wise it's wait a minute you you were collegiate mascot is that true um so it's always a really great talking point but yeah i have an espn commercial that's the that's the highlight of the career there i crashed into a window and Stuart scott says we have to get this glass fixed so oh, um nice. Jeez, yeah a lot nice. of fun times it was a, it was such a blast i retired though after college i couldn't keep yeah. doing that <laughs> You're done. Like if the fanatic had pulled a hamstring, you 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 wouldn't jump in there just to, at the last second. I thought about it. I really did think about it, and then, um, you know, I decided I was like, let me just go and pursue what I went to school for. Um, and probably now you probably lucked out, Breland, you know, because it, it, yeah, if probably you're... make less money in my starter in my starter <laughs> market than I would have as a mascot. But hey, it's okay. Um, we're here now. It all worked out for the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, during the during the Phillies run last year, remember mm-hmm. Jason Kelsey showed up um, and he hugged the fanatic. So you probably lucked out because I think he broke the fanatic when he picked <laughs> yeah. up the fanatic. Yeah, I think so too. So I, I'm I'm really grateful. And sometimes that happens. Like I feel like everyone always assumes that there's a man in there, um, and sometimes it's not. So just in the back of your own mind, if you're watching this, just be. Just be cautious that it might not be a burly big guy in there. It might be a, a small college woman. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, the only problem you would have missed out on a couple of free beers because Kelsey had a lot of had a lot of extra beers with him that night. I, I am downside. very sure yeah. he did. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, brilliant. So I, I I'm curious. Like obviously you you've been covering the 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 Eagles now since you you know your post at, at Fox 29. Um, yeah. Who's been the most favorite guy to cover in general? It might be the guy we just mentioned, but who, who's been the guy who's been the most fun for you when you're doing sort of a side, you know, uh, piece, a feature piece or anything like that? Um, oh man, we had, we had some great things. So I brought, um, um, getting ready, um, but I, I brought it to game day on Fox 29 and on Sunday mornings and, we're calling it four on Fox and it's just four completely non-football related questions. And the guys just really have a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Javon Hargrave and Brandon Graham last year just like went off about the vampire diaries and how big of fans they are and you know, who their favorite <laughs> characters are. And stuff. So it, it's, it's, so, it's always BG. Yeah. I know. BG. It's so much fun. I think BG is hysterical. Jordan Mylotta just absolutely just cracks me up. Um, 
And every single time you, you're always due for like a good laugh. But yeah, Jason Kelsey is, is definitely up there and Slay. Slay always makes me laugh. He's always yeah. entertaining. He's always good for yeah, a good whip or something. Um, and Jordan Davis as well. I like him. Uh, I think he's. Mm-hmm. I think he's really getting out of his shell, and um, you know, he's very genuine and and just very open. And I, I really appreciate talking to him as well. He's he's fun to get to know for sure. Well, that is the thing. Like you, you got to win, right? And, and this yeah. team wins, but they yeah. have a really unique bunch of guys they do like really likable this is a likable bunch yeah. they really do and i you know when they had all that success last year i thought a lot about um the 2019 kansas city chiefs when i got to cover casey and i walked in that locker room there was just something strange and a good and it was a good strange it was just this very unique feel where you walked in every single day and you knew those guys genuinely liked each other and they liked being around each other and they liked playing for each other. And there was a tangible feel to something that should be very intangible, right? Like you could feel it when you walked in the locker room that these guys have something special. And I felt it last year that, you know, just the way that they were loose and laughing and joking around and, you know, riding the scooters around the locker room and stuff. There was just this element of business, of course, but this feeling of lightness and this feeling of um, genuine camaraderie that I started to realize there was something special cooking. I didn't realize how special, (laughs) Um, but I knew, I knew there was something good in there and it's just been, it's been a blast to work with them. They're, they're so much fun. And uh, you, you kind of mentioned you've had the opportunity to cover some really good teams, Mm -hmm. Freeland. So um you know, does that come from the guys like BG? I mean, I for people that don't know BG, I mean, he sets the energy of that organization on a daily basis. And I mean that. I mean, people come in. I don't know anybody who doesn't like Brandon Graham. Um, and it's rare. They also have a head coach who's pretty outspoken, very good, his, his sort of ethos, his connection, first and foremost, as you know, he says it so much, Breland, I'm sure you've heard it 150 <laughs> times. Dog mentality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dog mentality. But do you think yeah. it comes first and foremost from the players themselves, you know, sort of self-policing the locker room, or does it trickle down from – uh, the head coach, whether it's a, a really experienced guy like Andy Reid or a younger head coach like Nick Sirian? I think it's a little bit of both, right? So I've been so fortunate to be around three phenomenal NFL coaches. Um, you know, obviously I mentioned I was around Andy Reid and before that um, I worked with Sean McDermott and um, I also covered a Rex Ryan led team and this is not going to be part of that conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. okay. That, and, but, but that's when I started to realize that, um, you know, you talk about X's and O's and, and the roster and things like that, but there are so many just intangible factors and watching the bills flip over from Rex Ryan, which was on it. It was so chaotic. Um, you, you never got bored. There was always something to talk about, but not a good something um, yeah. to this controlled culture shift that Sean McDermott implemented um, and the success that came from that. And just the, I think the coach sets the standard, but the players have to buy into it and the players have to truly embrace what um, is being thrown their way. And if they don't buy in, well, then you get that chaos, get that, uh, you know, chaotic feel around the team and it shows on the field. Right. But um you know, when the Bills started to shift their roster into guys that were more of their their current model and more of their mentality, you could feel it when you walked in. Um, the difference in, in the lack of ego and just the, the, the complete focus that was going on and, and the fact that they just wanted to play for each other. And then, obviously, the Chiefs just really were a well-oiled machine by the time I got there already. Um, Patrick Mahomes was still pretty young, but you could tell that that was there as well. And Yes, the standard came from Andy, but the players were buying in and guys like Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey and and Patrick were setting that standard and it was trickling down. 
into some of the younger guys or, or some of the guys that you wouldn't necessarily consider as a leader in the locker room. They were buying in because the guys around them were buying in and also setting that standard that was set from the top. And it's the same thing here. I think Nick does a really good job. I know he caught a lot of slack about his metaphors and analogies his first year because it was something different yeah. that we here in Philly, right? right? But what did we hear the entire time during that first year when everyone's like, this guy in his flowers, like what in the world? The players were like, listen, it makes sense to us. We mm-hmm. are buying in. It makes sense. And we're getting it. And, you know, you guys might not understand it, but it's working for us. Just let him cook. And sure enough, they were correct, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think as long as you set a culture and you set – a precedent that your players can easily pick up and buy in and believe that they're on the correct path. I think that that it's just natural for the locker room leaders like BG and Kelsey and Jalen to just pick in on on that and buy in. Um, But it also really helps. I think that those three guys that I mentioned, I think just have a drive on their own um, to just want to succeed and want to help the people around them get better. So I think, I don't, I think the birds have something really good cooking in that well, isn't that isn't that fascinating Breland and John like and I credit to Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman they mm-hmm. they know like they, they'll, they'll pluck guys who were maybe not exactly the headliners like I don't think any of us anticipated a Nick Sirianni hiring right and right. They, they they knew they had to come off of chip with Doug they just needed that kind of personality right mm-hmm. and then when things went south with Doug they, they pivot over to Nick like there there's an art to that like they have a pretty good feel of guys to bring in yeah and I mean I think I'll be the first one to, to tell you. I, I'm sure it was also partly because I was close to it. Um, I was extremely surprised when Eric the enemy did not get this job. Um, Cause I thought for sure, you know, Dougie P was an Andy Reed guy. And I know that Andy and Howie still ve- are very close, work very closely together. So I was like, Oh yeah, of course the pipeline's going to work again. Right. Like it's just going to happen. And then Nick, I felt kind of came out a little bit of obscurity. Um, I never re- even heard of the guy. And I'm like, who is this person? You know, and he comes out with these metaphors and all the, yeah. it, it, was just, it was different. And I didn't know yeah. what to expect, but you know, that's why I don't get paid to be Howie Roseman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they know what they're doing and they're, it, it yeah. absolutely is an art form. And- well, sometimes, you know, they almost hired Josh McDaniels, Breland. So I don't think that would have <laughs> So did everybody, well, John. He almost yeah. took about 15 yeah. gigs, yeah. okay? Yeah. They almost hired, before they hired, by the way, before they hired Doug Peterson, they almost hired uh, Adam Gase and Ben McAdoo. So sometimes it's better to be, Lucky, lucky good. than good. Yeah. At some, but they've done a very good job of yeah, hiring totally coaches in general. Both, right? yeah. yeah, it's probably a little bit of both, right? Luck yeah. and, you know, obviously knowing what you're doing. So Now, yeah, you brought up Travis. <laughs> Travis, okay. Kelsey. So you 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 have had this, um, I'll, I'll call it a luxury. Travis, <laughs> Kelsey, Jason, Kelsey. True. Yeah. Who's more entertaining? Who's more entertaining? Oof. Now, that's a difficult question. Now, why are you going to put me on the spot? Like that is, <laughs> John, that's brutal, man. Jeez. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Breland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Welcome. I have to pick between two of America's most beloved sons. Yes. <laughs> my, Donna is my favorite, personally. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. Well, yes. done. well done. She's the best. She cracks me up. I love her. And my favorite is that she remembers me from, you know, all of the previous times. And you know, immediately when she sees me, says, hi, you know, what's going on and whatnot. Um, always just a, such a pleasant family to deal with, but they're both entertaining, but in their own, in their own way, they're very similar, but they're also just a little different. Um, I loved, to, I loved Travis's fashion in Kansas city and just what he would show up wearing. You don't love Jason's always, fashion. So what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, well. and, and Jason's the complete opposite with his ocean drive shirt, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think they're great. And I, I, it's amazing to cover both of them. And I remember talking to Donna about this. I was like, you know, I obviously was with Travis for two seasons and now I've been here with Jason. And I just like, I just want to let you know. um, And this is like a weird comment, I guess, maybe to make, but you have two amazing sons, not just football players, but good people Mm -hmm. off the field as well. They're so pleasant to the media they're so good with community events and getting out in the community and they just, they get it right. They understand what it is to be 
on this platform and to have a platform and to use that um, for good. Yeah, I, we all know what Jason does with the Eagles Autism Foundation and all of his other charities. And Travis has um, 87 and running and he works really closely with Teach for America and Kansas City. And there's so many different things that Travis does as well. And players often, you know, do that stuff, but not at the high level, I think, that both of them are doing. Right. Um, and it's just been a real joy to be able to see what I see now in the podcast, because I know both of them. And just now America gets to know them, too. And it's just been a real blast to be able to see them really be the, themselves um, to everyone else as well. They kill it in the podcast. I oh, will say the this. podcast it's is amazing. tremendous. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Travis I got to give it to him. He was yeah. awesome on Saturday Night Live. I mean, that's a hard he thing was. to stand up there and he do was. that monologue, man, and not be nervous or butcher it and and hit your hit your you know your marks and everything. And he was right on. I thought it even the sketch. But yeah. you know what? I wasn't surprised though. That yeah. it, it, it's it's. I knew he was going to crush it because that's just like the type of person he is. He always gives everything he does, one hundred and ten percent. And he is funny and he just has this great comedic timing, just like Jason, you know, Jason's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the two of them, I, you're right. Did it, you guys, did you guys see the podcast segment where Jason showed Travis the picture, the annual picture of the NFL head coach? It was the, the funniest thing you'll ever it's see. What, it was the funniest thing I saw all year. He, so he Kelsey. couldn't basically, the gist of it was, yeah. Travis named like five coaches. He didn't yeah. know anybody. He didn't know yeah. guys that the Chiefs played that year. I don't think he recognized <laughs> Mike McDaniel. I'm telling you, it was and it was legitimate. Like he was like, I, I, I don't know, man. Like and, and Jason saying, "Dude, you played him this year, and you oh, don't." Know oh, the best was, was because <laughs> because remember, um, Shane Steichen and Jonathan Gannon both got hired. So this was mm -hmm. post Super Bowl. Yeah, and he didn't know either of them. <laughs> And it, I believe he said, I've never seen that guy in my, in my <laughs> life. And and Jason's like, we just played you in the Super Bowl. It was tremendous. Yeah, it was a tremendous, yeah. tremendous segment. Both yeah. of them are so entertaining. They, so. they just not out of the park every single episode. And I the the New Heights Live, did you guys see that? In Kansas I did. City where Jason I did. Was yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, good. They have they have truly found their craft for whenever, which I hope is not for a while, but whenever they do decide to transition out of the NFL, they have truly found their calling because they just they crush it every single time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let, Bree, let me ask you, um, and the, the Kelsey's are obviously the example of the, the great side of this, but how big a challenge is it still in this day and age for a woman in, in the locker room and trying to cover a predominantly, you know, male sports or whatever the case may be. Do you still, are there still a lot of roadblocks that you run into and a lot of the, you know, sort of horror stories that we hear, is that still there? I, I have never had a problem with in the locker room because of that, uh, because of me being a woman, but you know what okay. I think that it is. And this is a really cool phenomenon that's happening. And I've talked to so many other people about it. And I know, I know that it's a luxury because I work predominantly with the NFL. Like that, that's our, you know, bread and butter. I'm there constantly. It's a little difficult, you know, when you have 82 games or 162 yeah. to get into, you know, your respective clubhouse locker room mm -hmm. every single game. But I'm at least with the Eagles once or twice a week because, you know, they only play once or once a week. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, I find that the players don't even bat an eye at it. And I think it's because one of them played college ball at an extremely high level and there's women in those locker rooms, right? Um, mm -hmm. you get exposed to, to women around the game very early on. And so I don't even think it phases them at this point anymore that there's a woman in the locker room. I will say, you know, I hope in time, I, I I'm starting to see more women pop up on the Eagles feet. And I love that. Um, yeah. Cause I don't want to be, you know, the Lone Ranger sometimes, but <laughs> yeah, it's also fun. They just, they, they treat me like everybody else. And um, I think it's been really fascinating to watch that evolution of just from the horror stories we've heard before to now it's just kind of like, Oh yeah, there's a girl in here. Like they, they don't care. They do not yeah. care. And I've never had an issue um, since I've started, you know, mm -hmm. From Bills, Chiefs, Eagles, none of those teams, never once. 
um, did I have a problem with with any player um, because of my gender, which is really awesome. Good, um, I'm glad to hear there. that. Yep, yep. Yeah. Same with other sports, right? So mm -hmm. I'm really grateful for that. For awesome. Sure. I think we we treat you. It's a motley lot, but uh, <laughs> we we treat you like everybody yeah. else. Yeah, so. and that's and that's yeah. the fun thing because it you know it it isn't that way. And I, I'm you know the players are always really great, but sometimes you get you get those guys on the beat that don't want you there. And I'm so fortunate that, um, you know, every, and I've heard stories from other people in the league um, about that. And I, I, I've never really encountered that in my career. Um, just everyone's just like, Oh yeah. Okay. She's here. Like the same thing, yeah. same as the players. Yeah. Um, so I, it's just really great to know that, that it's changing um, slowly, but surely, but it is changing. And I, yeah, I've never, I've never had a problem with a coach, with a media member, with, um, a player, it's it, they don't even bat an eye at it, which is really rad. Welcome right. to 2023, right? <laughs> right. Hey, let's yeah. let's let's keep growing. You know, yeah, that's all absolutely. you can say, no doubt. Um, all right, so John and I were kicking this around a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, 14 and three last year was just nuts. I mean, it, it's rare that you're ever going to see that. I, I think they very well could be an 11 or 12 win team, but it doesn't mean they're worse. It just schedule challenges personnel turnover, et cetera. Where do you fall on this, Brie When you look at the schedule, you look at sort of the, the, the bigger picture here of what 2023 looks like. Yeah, I kind of agree with you guys. Obviously, we know um, the strength of schedule is significantly different this year. Um, and it, it's much, much harder. I believe it's the hardest schedule on paper right now in mm -hmm. the league. I do believe, though, that the Eagles are as talented um, as they showed last year. And I do believe if defense would have made the proper adjustments that they would have been Super Bowl champions last year. Um, but, you know, we, we got to move on from that. Um, but they, you know, every, that was the big question, right? Ch okay. Well, yeah, they're beaten up on, you know, the Giants or the Jets or, you know, whoever stupid team that they're playing. That's like, oh, okay. Well, that doesn't really count because they're not, you know, a, a high profile <clears throat> Let's see how they do against Kansas City. Or let's see how they do against San Francisco. Well, we saw that, right? And they've more than proved that they were able to hang with not only San Francisco. They just pummeled them. But, I mean, we, I think it's safe. We can call Kansas City a dynasty at this point. Um, you know, three Super Bowls in five years and you win two of them. They're not going to stop. That train is just full speed ahead. And we're going to see so much more of Patrick Mahomes and company in that you know championship game in, in the near future that being said it's like that was the, that was the standard and I think that they they rose to meet it I do think um obviously there were some glaring errors but you also learn from those very much and, and we I think a lot of people forget that the Chiefs made a lot of errors in their you know first couple of years as well getting up there remember the uh, jumping off sides during the AFC championship oh boy oh yeah um, oh yeah oh yeah yeah so I, I mean they made some mental mistakes as well when they were just trying to figure it out and now look at them go and I do think you know retaining the veteran presence and, and I mean Jalen Hurts my goodness the strides that he took between year two and year three were just incredible and I think that it, he just has an upward trajectory here um, because he just keeps learning and growing and just the type of person that he is, he will not settle for just good enough. Um, he wants to be great. And I, I, I do think the pieces are in place for them to be, you know, an 11 and 12 win team, even though they allegedly have the hardest schedule in the NFL this year. I do think that they are legitimately that good. Um, but I guess we'll see, right? <laughs> yeah. At, at Breland Fox 29, make sure That's you me. follow uh, Breland Moore on Twitter. She does a tremendous job, sports anchor, Fox 29, co-host of the, the 215. Uh, now, I gave you a tough question with the Kelsey brothers, but I'm going to finish it with the toughest question of all. Oh, gosh. Because um, your buddy, Devin Caney, I, I work with her, friend of the show uh, on the Jacob Post Game Show. Um, you guys, every once in a while, they they – they get pictures of me at Billy's games on, on Instagram, but you were, you guys were at the Taylor Swift concert. Um, we sure which I always say, by the way, openly begging for tickets. Let's be real. I mean, yeah. Devin was openly campaigning. Yeah. Freeland. So, you know, 
Real quick story. Years ago, not this time, but UFC was at the Wells Fargo Center and I was covering the UFC and I had no idea Taylor Swift was next door. It was the worst traffic jam in history I've ever got caught in. But this time around, so you guys were obviously big fans. Mm -hmm. Bigger deal to you, NFC Championship game or Taylor Swift at Lincoln Financial Field? Now, why are you going to do that to me? <laughs> John, John is killing you with yeah, these questions. I said, this is unbelievable. And I want you to tell the truth because I think I know the truth. But go ahead. Okay, I only say this because I've been spoiled in my career and I did two AFC championships before. Yes. It's got to be it's Taylor. Right? It's, it's all comes hat. around yes. like yes. once every five years and it was yes. an Eras tour. And I mean, she's from my, my hometown. I've been a fan since she dropped Tim McGraw. Um, um, I remember being at, I, it used to be called the Sovereign Performing Arts Center. I have no idea what it's called anymore. Cause I don't like spend a ton of time in writing anymore. Um, but it like, I was, I was just blown away as a high schooler and I've been a fan ever since. Um, so yeah, it, it has to be Taylor Swift, but like no offense to the Eagles. And I will say um, it was, it was different. It was more meaningful being at the NFC championship with the Eagles, with, you know, the team that I grew up watching as a child than it was, for the AFC championship with the there Chiefs. There we so, go. Like, See, so, nice. uh, that's why. That's why I give you the tough question. She really, she yes. really worked both yes. sides of that fence. That was, that. <laughs> that was impressive. That yes. was, did I tell you my story? So Sunday, when the Sixers are playing at three thirty, all right, I'm on, I was on WIP until two thirty. I hustle home. Uh -huh. I load the car up with eight teenage girls. All right, my daughter and all her friends, and I truck them down to the Sunday show. It was absolute chaos, chaos, chaos. driving down there, man. Chaos. It was. Yeah. I have never seen anything like it in my life. Oh. It it was unreal. The the whole and then the there was twenty thousand people just like outside. Yes, yeah. no twenty five thousand. Yeah. Yes, yeah, incredible, incredible. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them, and that's why it was. I also I will tell you, it was the weirdest experience, but like in a very good way. Weird. Um, everyone was just so polite. Like there was no, nothing. Oh my gosh, excuse me, I'm so sorry, excuse me. Hi, hi, how are you doing? I just wanted to let you know that you look really beautiful today. Like I just want to, I love your outfit. Um, Just like- Very Philadelphia, you, very yeah. Philadelphia yeah. like it usually is, right? For, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was it was peak Lincoln Financial Field on any given day, right? Oh um, my God. Oh and my even God. our Uber drivers were telling us uh, that they've never had a weekend like this. Everyone was just- so kind and tipped so well and just like hi sorry i didn't mean to close your door like that i really sorry i didn't mean to like, stand <laughs> and at all. like very very overly polite and i'm like yeah that checks <laughs> yeah, that's a man oh man all right Bree, well listen it was great having you on uh we, we appreciate yeah. it keep up the good work on fox yeah, this is awesome. Keep up oh, the good I'm going to ask Fox you again, so be yeah. prepared, Brie. Yes. Now you're in the rotation. <laughs> yes. Uh, Fox 29 sports anchor, of course, the co-host of the 215 as well. Breland, thanks. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Take care, guys. All right. That is Breland Moore of Fox 29. All right, John, let's get a quickie in here. We'll come back. We'll do our uh, final thoughts on the program and get everybody set off for the weekend. Uh, I'm, by the way, uh, double header, as we mentioned, I'll be back at yeah. noon with sports. You're going Davis. Ernie Banks, baby. How We're going, baby. We got Ernie strong. Banks, Wally Pip, everything, that's everything. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of old baseball references yeah. today. Yeah, that's for sure. But we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. John McMullen, Rob Ellis, Birds, three sixty-five. <laughs> Weather for.